Hello everyone, welcome to Advent Broadcast Network. Thank you so much for joining us today from all over the world. We have a special feature and joining me at the studio is Pastor Stephen Kaba and I'm so glad that he's joining us today to give us some thoughts on technology and its use in the church. I'm your host for today, Jen Nguena. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pastor Kaba. Thank you for having me. We will dive right into it and just get to discussing. And I would like us to begin with you introducing yourself. Who is Pastor Kaba and what do you do? Well, my name is Stephen Kaba. I'm a pastor in Houston area. Uh, I was pastoring in San Antonio for the last six years. Now I'm in Houston area. Uh, I love what I do. I love being a preacher. I love being a minister. I love uh, media, communication, technology, all those put together is really nice what would you say is one of those things that drove you to being a pastor well i think uh it's more of a calling i felt that god was leading me in that direction and uh, i don't regret it because i've seen a lot of blessings in the years that i have been a minister amen that yeah. is really nice thank you so much and what are you working on right now well, right now, I'm a pastor in the Houston area. I'm uh, with Katy Church, and I'm also helping uh, a nation of praise in one way or another. And I'm also uh, finishing my PhD in communication and media studies. I've been working on it for quite a while. But um, I, I, I praise God because I may defend uh, my dissertation this year. So I'll be done uh, with my PhD in communication and media studies this year. Oh, that is really nice. Congratulations, Erin. Thank order. you. Yeah, and I have read one of your articles that was published by the North North American North Division. American Division. Right. Yes, the one that's titled The Future Church Through Digital Media. Could you tell us a little bit about what you wrote, what it's all about and why you wrote that? Well, I I wrote this article back in March and uh, if you remember that time uh the the whole world so to speak was experiencing this pandemic which was hitting every country and uh, most churches they started streaming their services you know online streaming and all that uh, and so I wrote this article which was kind of an uh, awareness that you know we need to fashion our churches where we are able to use media where we are able to use technology where we are able to use social media in different ways and we have to plan it because it may never be the same again as we proceed uh doing ministry mm -hmm. so that's pretty much what drove me to write the article okay could you highlight a little bit more of what the details of the article were well uh one of the first thing that i said is that uh each and every church we need to plan ahead because um it looks like the church left the building you know people are no longer meeting in what we call a sanctuary or a literal building mm -hmm. and so the church having left the building how do we respond as a church and so we need now to start planning how the future church will look like and so uh and the second point that i really really emphasize for churches is that it is very very important to build or to develop a social media uh, strategy an integrated social media strategy because right now a church which doesn't have a social media strategy i think it's planning to fail because we are streaming our services on uh, social media on facebook on youtube and so uh, the church need to plan for that they need to come up with a strategy what social media platform will we be using are we, will we be uh, streaming our services on facebook or on youtube and how are we gonna do it and do we have manpower to do that what softwares do we need uh so that we are able to reach out uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people out there and also another thing that i wrote uh just in a nutshell in the article is uh we have to be aware of the content that we are sharing because it's one thing to be on social media it's one thing to share videos on youtube but is the content beneficial to the people who are um are listening or watching is the content valuable because if you don't have the right content what you're doing is that you'll be driving people away 
from your church. That's true. And, and so those are some of the few things that I try to emphasize on the article. Mm -hmm. I also noticed from your article, you talked about creating a social following, a social media following. That's right. And having a following. How do churches that are beginning from scratch do that? I think uh, uh, many churches are blessed, especially with young people. And we have to come to a place where we are making use of our young people. They know the ins and outs of social media. They know the ins and outs of Instagram, of, of, of Facebook and YouTube. And so we have to use them. And so we, as a church, each church is different. We have to define who our target market, so to speak, is. Who are we trying to reach out there? Mm -hmm. And so if we are trying to reach a younger demographic as a church, then uh, platforms like Instagram would be very, very ideal because they're there and, 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 and stuff like that. And so and that's how you build your social media following depending on the demographic that you're reaching. I find churches using almost all social media platforms. They're using, they're on YouTube, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram. And this is because they want to reach to different demographics. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more you go out there, the more you share your videos and all that, then you, you, you have these followings. People are looking forward to you to your uh, messages, to your programs and all that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about young people being involved in all this. And definitely young people are the biggest manpower we have in the church right That's now. Right. And so how would you, how does the church bring up the youths in using the technology responsibly? What are your pointers on that? How does the church go about that? Because uh, the internet is wild out here That's and right. you can get so many things out there. How do you train the youth? How do you guide the youth to use it responsibly? That's a very, very, uh, very good question. Number one, you said an important point that technology is not neutral. You can use technology for good, and that's what we try to do as a church. You know, we are trying to do outreach. We are trying to reach people. But also, if you are not using technology responsibly, mm -hmm. it can be a rabbit hole whereby it has negative ramifications. And so that is why something we call media literacy comes in. Uh, if we're going to use our young people, not only our young people, even the older folks all uh uh, any kind of demographic we need to train people on media literacy what are the the the, the responsible ways of using media uh -huh. and because if you don't use it right then we know there's a lot of information out there that can be uh, disastrous to our minds to our spirituality and stuff like that mm -hmm. so i think churches should uh get professionals let them train the young people. Let them train the church board. Let them train uh, the church members on media literacy, on the proper ways of using media or technology in the right way. And so once we do that, we know we are building a safety platform to anybody who we are telling, okay, use this media to reach out to the community. Great. That, that looks like a very nice tra strategy to put in place. Um, if you look at most of the churches and not even the churches alone, but in the society in general, the older generation has a very negative attitude towards technology or they associate technology with a lot of negativity mm -hmm. and all bad things. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring the older, te older tats? on board how do we bring them on board to know that technology is not that bad it can actually be used well you know i i think uh, how i'm looking at it that has really changed in the last couple of months uh there's this uh writer his name is a uh, postman he said that society has surrendered itself to technology basically we have surrendered ourselves to technology uh -huh. we are dependent on technology we we take uh, orders from technology mm -hmm. uh, for instance right now in the times of the pandemic uh, people don't want to go to the doctor but you can have you know they call it telehealth where you see your doctor so we see all the folks getting into the use of technology oh, yeah. that is really changing mm -hmm. and so we can take advantage that there has been a shift 
uh, in the use of technology, the people, even the older folks who are skeptical on the use of technology, now they know, man, we have to depend on technology. In other words, Postman is right in that we are taking orders from technology, uh, deliveries, food deliveries. I mean, every aspect of life right now is dependent on technology. Uh -huh. And so uh, the, 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 the older folks who have not really embraced uh, technology, I think they are getting there and we can help them along the way because it seems it's the norm. Is it a good thing? Maybe it looks like it's not a really good thing to really depend on technology, but we can take advantage of it to finish the work of the gospel. Okay, that is, you've mentioned a very interesting point. It is not good for us to wholly depend on it, but take advantage of it. What do you really mean by that? Uh, technology is here. Uh, if you say you're not going to use it, then you'll end up uh, be uh, technologically disadvantaged. And so because the platforms have been created, uh, these uh, um, platforms of social media, mm -hmm. uh, applications for both uh, Android and, 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 and iPhones and stuff like that, why not take those platforms, those uh, technologies that have been developed and try to use them for good with an understanding that it's not neutral because using these technologies sometimes you know there's something we call deep mediatization whereby uh, the big tech companies they are trying to draw people to a sort to speak like a rabbit hole maybe they're trying to advertise something that may be detrimental to you uh -huh. And that's why uh, earlier I talked about uh, media literacy, which is very, very important. Mm -hmm. If we are aware of the dangers of technology, then when we see it, then we know we don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, there's one more thing on that note. Mm -hmm. uh, we know how addictive technology can be. That's we know right. how addictive social media can be. How does the church balance between uh, having people listen to the word of God and evangelism and also avoiding people getting addicted to the social media pages and things that's, like that's that. Actually, that's a very, very brilliant question and uh, it's called media effects. Uh, anytime uh, media or a sound technology is introduced to people, there's something we call media effects in that it's not going to leave you just the way it found you. Mm -hmm. That's why we say it's not neutral. It's That's right. Somehow it's going to change you. It, it can go left or right. And so that's why it is important to, to teach people on the proper use of media. And, uh, I already talked about media literacy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Teach people on the media effects that if you use technology in this way, these will be effects. Mm -hmm. You know, they say the same, the same addiction that uh, the same uh, parts of the brain that are triggered with like drug addiction. It's the same with technology and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So if we are aware of this, if churches could be intentional, not just use technology, but also embrace responsible technology, then we will be going in the right direction. Okay, that's right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, one last question. Why is this issue very important to you? Because we've discussed about technology. Clearly, you know so much about it. And you've mentioned in your PhD, you're doing something to do with communication. Why is this issue very important to you? I think as we uh, approach the close of the world's history, uh, the stage has been set for us. And we are in a, a, a very techie society. We are in a society that is media frenzied. In other words, uh, every aspect of our lives have been mediatized. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that these are avenues that God is providing for us to finish the work of the gospel. Uh -huh. Now, think about it. I'm talking about, I already talked about uh, having social media platforms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you, you may ask yourself, why are we having? As a church, if you can't answer that, then you're doing things wrong. 
and that's why we need to have you know I, I, somebody said i i i saw it on uh, i think on facebook somebody said you know the church used to hire bible workers but right now i think we need to be hiring uh, digital strategists uh -huh. to help us uh carry out the gospel in the most effective uh technological way people have their uh, smartphones always so let's take advantage of that how we saw church has really changed before my community was around my zip code mm -hmm. now because of technology we are on we are on youtube we are on facebook we are all over then my community has changed my community is not defined by the zip code mm -hmm. my community has it's it's all over the world and so as a minister and also as a mm -hmm. it's no longer the zip printed mm -hmm. it's it's global now another thing is that uh, you know we have websites as as our church and I, I i look at some websites in churches and stuff like that and it's something that we need to to work on better where we create in it in such a way that uh it's user friendly uh that people can easily come and navigate if you have a website that a five-year-old cannot navigate through then you're doing it wrong you need to change it. you need you need to change a lot people spend uh two to three seconds to make a decision if they will stay on your website or True. not so the visuals matters a lot and mm -hmm. when you're using social media uh, an integrated social media strategy it means you're trying to draw traffic to your website mm -hmm. and so you need to have content that is right for the people uh -huh. depending on the demographic that you're looking so that passion that that drove me to 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 this area of media studies to this area of communication because i believe it's gonna be very integral uh in finishing the work of the gospel and that is very true thank you so much for that and i am so glad we've had you today at the studio it's been a very eye-opening discussion and in closing what would you like to tell our viewers and those who are listening to us your fellow pastors and also those who are worshiping i think what i can say is that the stage is set for us to finish the work of the gospel all we need to do we need to be intentional we need to have the right resources we need to have people let's get people who are professionals who are trained in these areas and they will be able to help us reach hundreds of people reach thousands of people and so uh let's be afraid of getting out of the box and using uh the skill sets that we have and maybe you have them in your churches and you just need to put it to work implement it and we are always here to help thank you so much pastor kaba for joining us at the studio today and for giving us what you have today thank you so much it's been very educative and eye-opening and i'd also like to thank our viewers for joining us today and listening to us to the end do not forget to like leave your comments and also share this video so that we may continue educating people out there on the use of technology and how to spread god's word through technology thank you so much for joining us today until next time i've been your host jen Wenner.